All right, sixth graders, lesson 53, decimals chart. So we finished up last lesson again with moving the decimals, and today we're going to work some more at that. This picture here from your book on the bottom of page 283 shows some different uh, facts about decimal numbers. If we are adding or subtracting, then our decimals need to line up here like we see. With multiplication, we've learned to count how many. So you can see in this situation here, there's one. And then there's two lines there behind the decimal. So in the answer down here, we see one, two numbers behind the decimal. When we're dividing, it goes back to the same idea as we had with addition and subtraction. The decimal needs to line up. Over here, then, is what we focused on uh, in our last lesson, where we were moving the decimal based on how many numbers there were in front of the decimal out here. So we would have to move it. If we move the decimal one place in front, then we move it one place inside as well. So this is a nice chart for you to help you remember. Am I you know, doing some addition, subtraction? Am I multiplying? Am I dividing? Or am I just moving the decimal place? In either case, uh, in all of those cases, we want to start to get used to that and know that what, what we need to do with the decimal in each of those problems. All right, now we go on to simplifying fractions. Uh, a couple of ways that we can do this will show we could reduce first or we could convert first. Uh, it's not going to really matter. We hopefully should come to the same conclusion. So. Uh, here we'll add 4 plus 5 equals 9. And if you remember, the denominator will not change. So that's going to stay a 6. So here's where we have two different ways now that we can reduce this. Uh, we can look at these two numbers and say, I can reduce these ahead of time. And so that's going to be 3 over 2. And then, well, I can't write that as just a, that's an improper fraction, so I need to write that as one and a half. So that's one possible way of doing it. Uh, the other possible way uh, to do this would be to say, well, we have nine over six, and that equals, well, not, six will go into nine one time, one times six uh, 1 times 6 is 6, and then 9 minus 6 will be 3. So I'll put a 3 up here, and then my denominator will be 6. And then I have to reduce that to 1 and a half. So again, we've got the same answer over here, 1 and a half, as we've got over here, 1 and a half. Just two different ways to do it. Most, uh, most of you, I will expect to do it this way over here. This is usually the most common way that we see students... Uh, simplify their fractions. So that's it for today. You can get started on your practice set, work on moving some of the decimals, and then also on simplifying fractions.